Heavy industry requires a bold and innovative clean energy solution beyond what is available today in order to reach a carbon-free future. Heavy industry is responsible for over 30% of global CO2 emissions annually. Industries like mining, steel production, and agriculture are critical for our world to function day to day and to grow, but they are also some of the most difficult to decarbonize. The biggest hurdle is their reliance on fossil fuels to power their manufacturing processes in ways renewables, like wind and solar, can't replicate. Enter fossil free hydrogen, industry's best emerging solution to decarbonize. When hydrogen is consumed as a fuel, water vapor is its only major byproduct. Hydrogen is also a highly abundant element on our planet, but it isn't readily available by itself in a pure form. This requires hydrogen to be extracted from resources like natural gas or water. Currently, 95% of the hydrogen produced relies on the use of fossil fuels during the production process. Today, hydrogen annually produces slightly more carbon emissions than the entire country of Germany, which ranks sixth in the world. Over 90 million tons of hydrogen is used by industry annually, and that number continues to grow. The possibility of affordable, carbon-free hydrogen opens up pathways for industries like shipping, aviation, and energy storage to decarbonize. It's estimated the world will need over 550 million tons of truly clean hydrogen by 2050 to reach net zero energy, and some estimates even put that number around 650. That means there's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity for the clean hydrogen industry to answer the call. Hydrogen production is typically identified by colors, which refer to how it is produced. These colors make up a hydrogen rainbow that includes everything from gray to pink. The biggest ones to focus on are gray, blue, turquoise, and green. Gray hydrogen is the most widely produced and cost-effective type of hydrogen today. It is usually created by the steam-methane reforming process. Steam and methane, which is just natural gas, react at a high temperature creating carbon monoxide and pure hydrogen. Water can then be introduced to make more hydrogen and carbon dioxide waste, which is released into the atmosphere. With every ton of gray hydrogen produced, 9 to 12 tons of CO2 is also created. Blue hydrogen uses the same process as gray hydrogen, made with natural gas and using SMR, but the CO2 byproduct is captured and sequestered underground. When the CO2 byproduct can be fully captured and sequestered, the process itself can be considered carbon neutral. Turquoise hydrogen also uses natural gas as a raw material, but produces pure hydrogen through a process called methane pyrolysis. Methane, or natural gas, is heated in a reactor creating hydrogen and a solid carbon byproduct instead of a CO2 gas. This technique is very much still in its infancy and requires more development to meet today's need and relies heavily on methane, a potent greenhouse gas that can leak from supply infrastructure. Thankfully, there's an even better and sustainable way, green hydrogen. Green hydrogen is the most crucial type of hydrogen for a decarbonized future, and it's made through the electrolysis process. That's when electricity, powered by green energy sources, splits water into hydrogen gas and oxygen. That means the entire process is CO2-free. Why is green hydrogen preferable? When hydrogen systems are powered by 100% renewable energies, ranging from solar to wind, to hydro and geothermal, that's what we can truly call fossil-free hydrogen, with zero emissions from the production process and production inputs. Critically, the electricity used in the electrolysis process does not come from fossil fuels either. When natural gas is used, it will always contribute to creating harmful emissions even before the hydrogen extraction process begins. This is because the drilling, extraction, and transportation of natural gas creates fugitive emissions which are released into the atmosphere. To illustrate this, let's look at a side-by-side -side of carbon emissions from all these types. So, if gray hydrogen is so bad for the environment and blue and turquoise emit substantially more than fossil-free, why are people focused on those methods instead of making fossil-free hydrogen? It all comes down to price. To make fossil-free hydrogen cheaper than gray or blue, we need to make the cost of the system far cheaper, at least one-third to one-fourth of the system's cost today. That's why the company Electric Hydrogen is making cheap electrolyzer systems their mission. They will unlock fossil-free hydrogen that is at cost parity with gray through slashing costs and improving performance. They're doing it by making massive systems that are also more efficient. Why go massive? Just as we saw with solar energy and electric vehicles, things didn't get cheap until we started to do it at massive scale. 
Today, most green hydrogen projects are 1 to 2 megawatts in size, and the largest to date has been close to 20 megawatts. Electric hydrogen system sizes start at 100 megawatts. Electric hydrogen is creating operational efficiency by integrating breakthrough chemistries at the system's most fundamental level. The first electrolyzers were built as gold-plated experiments for submarines. Since then, each development design has made marginal improvements. Incremental change is not going to unlock cost parity if the last 50 years are any example. This is why electric hydrogen is going big and rethinking electrolysis down to the cell level, all the way up to installing plants and manufacturing their proprietary technology on production lines. This is the only way to slash the costs of these systems and make fossil-free hydrogen at cost or cheaper than gray hydrogen and drive deep decarbonization now and for the future.